Good morning, YouTube. This is Leo. That is my modular synth. This is a Music Thing modular spring reverb that I just finished building. And here is where I built that module. So let's rewind the tape, see how I built it, and see what this thing can do for your music. So I bought this kit from thonk.co.uk. They're a great shop based in the UK, and they only sell DIY music projects. I should mention that I bought this kit at full price, and I'm just a regular customer of theirs. Not endorsed by them or by Music Thing Modular at all. Now I did get to meet Tom Whitwell at Superbooth. Tom is the creator of Music Thing Modular, and at the Superbooth trade show in Berlin, I uh, had a chance to briefly talk to him. And I really enjoyed the conversation. It was a very short chat. Uh, I was there for my own company, Strange Science Instruments. And I was curious to see what everybody else was doing. So I, uh, I took some time off from the booth, uh, walked around, and uh, had a very brief conversation with Tom and a number of other people. And uh, he was very generous with his time, and uh, I enjoyed our brief conversation. I absolutely love that about the musical instruments business, especially with Eurorack, because the people, the builders of these products are so nice and usually accessible. You can just talk to anybody and uh, they'll tell you what they know and they will share things. And it's a very supportive and cool community of people. I, I really enjoy uh, working with and interacting with these people. Now you might be wondering why build this module? Why did I start with this one? Well, if you're a guitar player or a synth nerd, you already know what a nice reverb can do for a dull, kind of boring sound. And I happen to really love the sound of a spring reverb and a plate reverb. I think those two are really useful tools to have. Even though they don't really sound like reverberations at all, I don't really care about that. I just like the way that they sound. I like the texture that they can add to really dry sounds. And that is very common if you're working in a modular synth world. The sound of a raw oscillator going through a filter can be very, very dry and lacking in ambience. So with something like a spring reverb or a plate or really any kind of reverb, you can make it sound like it's a sound in a room rather than a dry, disembodied kind of sound. So I'm happy to report this was a pretty straightforward build and it took about four hours for me, but I think you can go much faster than that if you don't have to operate a camera and do the build at the same time. The instructions provided were very well written. Uh, the high resolution photos in the PDF were wonderful and made building this thing really easy. So hats off to Thonk and Music Thing Modular. I wish that all of the DIY kits that I build had instructions this clear. The PCBs have all through hole components and so you just need basic soldering skills to build this module. If you use the Accutronics Digital Reverb Brick instead of a traditional Spring Reverb Tank, there's actually zero tuning involved. You can just build this thing and put it to use right away. What's interesting is I realized after the build that I didn't even use my multimeter once on this build. No multimeter, no oscilloscope, and no special tools or skills really besides basic soldering. Now this module does have 97 components that you need to place on the board. So if you've never done a DIY project before, this might not be the best place to start. If you have done a DIY project before, then, then by all means, jump in. You shouldn't really have any problems. So the short story is that I love this module. I, I buy and sell modules all the time. I don't get precious about selling things that I'm not using, but I can already tell this is going to be something that I'm going to have for a long time because it's useful, uh, it's flexible, it can do a lot of things, and it's just a nice thing to have. Alright, so there's a lot of people that mix in the box and 
maybe you use plugins and you've never actually seen a spring reverb before. So let me show you this. This is a spring reverb tank. Let me flip it over so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Now spring reverb tank has actual springs in it. And the way it works is sound comes in here. There's a transducer which pushes the sound into the spring. The sound travels back and forth along one or more springs. This one happens to have three springs. And there's a pickup on the other side which picks up the sound and sends it back to wherever it came from. Okay, and that's how you get that nice spring reverb sound. Now the Music Thing Modular Spring Reverb module supports this kind of tank, right? It's got RCA in and out, which correspond to the RCA in and out of the spring reverb tank. However, and this is the reason why I bought this module, the Music Thing Modular Spring Reverb actually has support for this Accutronics digital uh, reverb brick. Now this thing is awesome. I really like the idea of this. I love my spring reverb tank. I think this thing is wonderful and it sounds amazing, but it is very finicky. I'm worried every time I move this thing, there's a chance that the springs may come loose and then I'm gonna have to spend a bunch of time putting this thing back together again, which I don't wanna do. This is digital, so this is robust. I don't have to worry about impact. And also, these springs tend to pick up a lot of noise. So if you have a noisy power supply in your synth, some of that can really get picked up here and you end up with all kinds of hum and buzz in your recordings. This is much less uh, prone to that sort of thing. So you're gonna end up with a, a cleaner spring reverb sound without having to, uh, to have an actual tank. And so that's why I'm happy to have both of these. I'm gonna use this with my Bifaco spring reverb module. And this, I'm just gonna use it by itself. I'll probably put this in a different case so that I can be mobile and actually travel around and still have a reverb with me when I'm not in the studio. All right, so here we got the module. It's all built, it's ready to go. I'm gonna install it into this, the Dope for a Beauty case. The reason I'm using the Beauty case is because this has the noisiest power supply in the history of power supplies. It's really bad. If I used a traditional spring reverb tank with this module in here or anywhere around here, it would pick up all manner of noise, which is not what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and install this here. And let's get some blank panels in there to make it look pretty. It's much better with the quick install method. I don't know how people used to mess around with screwdrivers and stuff. That's nonsense. All right, so now I got the synth plugged in here, and this is just going off to be recorded in the computer. No additional effects, no additional uh, uh, processing. All right, so I'm just gonna build a basic beat and then you're gonna hear this synth make a bass line through this module with and without spring reverb. Okay, so here we go. Let's just build a quick beat. Closed hats. Yeah, sure. Sure, that'll work. Now let's set the arpeggiator on here so you can just have some basic bass line happening. All right. This is very dry. Think. I mean, this sounds okay, but I like to I like to have sounds with a little bit more uh, ambience to them, not just super dry. And check out what the smallest amount of reverb will do for this sound. I mean, this is barely doing anything, and yet it's adding so much life to this. And you can go ahead and add a little more, more feedback too. All of a sudden it's a little bit more interesting. Here's here's the same sound again with no reverb. And just a little bit of that spring reverb can go a long way. And 
you have longer release times, the spring reverb does let you get into more kind of pad-like territories. I tend to like control to high-pass the incoming sound. So sometimes it gets a little bit muddy, especially with low notes, so you can go ahead and high-pass that. So it gets less muddy when you're running it through the spring reverb tank or the digital break. One thing I like about the high-pass filter is that it gives you that nice uh, Joy Division kind of hollow, empty reverb sound. again. a sense of what it sounds like. nice huh I like that thing it's great it's it's just by itself now mind you you can plug in CV and control the uh, the mix knob you can bring in other sounds and mix the two uh, the input and the uh, the crossfade these are all features that I haven't even jumped into yet this is just the spring reverb tank by itself with no modulation I love what that does to my my boring synth sounds so nice work I'm happy with this I'm gonna keep it Hey listen, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, I know this is kind of a geeky subject, so if you've got friends that are interested in this kind of stuff, I'd really appreciate if you shared it with them. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.